Today we're going to create a cable capable of dumping the Wi-Fi credentials of any Windows machine it's plugged into on this episode of Hackbyte. Most hackers, when they think of Wi-Fi hacking, think in terms of grabbing a handshake using a wireless network adapter and then cracking that handshake with some sort of password list. However, you don't really need to go through all of that to get a Wi-Fi password. There is a much easier method, and that is having the person give the Wi-Fi password to you directly. While that might not always be possible, there is a pretty easy way to do it if they have a Windows machine and you do a little social engineering with something like an OMG cable. So the OMG cable is capable of keystroke injection. So what we can do is take advantage of a feature in Windows which allows you to save a network profile. And this network profile saves things like Wi-Fi network names and the passwords associated with them for any Wi-Fi network you've saved to that Windows machine. So on the OMG cable, we can make a payload run on boot. So the second it's plugged into a Windows machine, it will go through the command line and save this configuration file and then exfiltrate it to a server of ours somewhere. If this sounds interesting to you, all you're going to need is a OMG cable and an unlocked Windows machine. If you haven't already flashed your OMG cable with firmware and gotten that set up, you can reference my previous video to get started. Once you have that all set up, we're ready to get going. This payload by Easton Crafter is going to be the core of our payload today. It's on the Hack5 GitHub page for OMG payloads but there are also a couple of refinements that I think are worthwhile including. We're just gonna copy and paste all of this, which is the ducky script portion. If you wanna, you can copy the, the comments up here, but that's not really necessary. Now we're gonna go connect to the OMG cable over Wi-Fi. Go to the 192.168.4.1, and that should bring up a page something like this and then we can command paste this payload in. So what is this payload actually doing? Let's go over that really quick because I think it's very important to go over a payload before you run it. So that way you can understand what it's doing and troubleshoot it. And also make sure that you're not gonna get hacked in the process. So this payload is for a Windows machine. So the GUI key on the Windows machine is just the Windows key. So Windows R just pops up the run command box. And then I already have that next string loaded in. And as you can see, that just opens up a very tiny command line interface. Now, this next bit down here, the netshwlan export profile, we can go here to the Microsoft documents and we can see that this is how we export a Wi-Fi profile. And that's what I was saying, it's going to have the Wi-Fi credentials, uh, the network name and password in plain text in it. So going back over to the OMG cable, continuing down this payload, here we're gonna use PowerShell to basically sort through that and take out the key material, password, and save it to Wi-Fi pass. And then down here, we're gonna use PowerShell to send a web request. And as you can see here, we need to replace this with a website or URL for uh, a webhook we have. Now, you can go through the whole process of setting up one yourself, but really I find the easiest way to do that is by going to this site, webhook.site. And here, don't copy it from the URL, uh, click down here, copy to clipboard. And this is a unique uh, URL, and essentially it's gonna listen for the OMG cable to make that web request and it's going to show you that here on this web page. Sometimes you might have to refresh it, but usually I don't have to refresh the page. So now that we have that copied, we'll go back over to our payload and insert that there. Another little thing we need to change here, string GUI R, uh, we need to remove the string. Uh, in fact, it's just Windows R. String would type in GUI space R. So, maybe a little typo there, got that fixed. And this is the basic payload now ready to run. So if we go over to our Windows machine, 
we're gonna save this to slot one and then let's run it and see what happens on our windows machine okay here we can see the payload running as you can see it goes pretty fast the amazing thing about these devices is how fast they're able to type And that should be the payload completed. As you can see, it didn't quite close out the way we have it typed right now. I believe the intention with this exit at the bottom was to exit there, but that's not the way it seems to be working right now. So this is where we can get into a couple little tweaks to refine this payload. If we can hide it, that would be even better. The way we're gonna close it out is pretty easy. We're just going to add in here string exit, which is gonna type exit in the command line and then enter to enter that. So that fixes that bit. Now, how can we move it around? So if we look at our Windows machine, we click GUI R, pop us up, run, enter, gets us our little terminal. Now, this is where it's good to investigate hotkeys. We can do alt space, which pulls up this little menu. And then if we press M, that gives us mouse control. Now we can use the arrow keys to move this around. So left arrow moves it left, right arrow moves it right, up and down. So I think the way I'm gonna modify this payload is just put a bunch of down arrow. So that way, ta-da, we move it all the way down to the bottom. You can only see this tiny black bar. And once you click enter to stop the mouse movement method, you still have it selected. So you can still type and run commands in that command line. But as you can see, it's pretty well hidden. If you just glanced at this computer, you definitely wouldn't notice anything's up unless you're an eagle eyed person. We just need to add in those commands, which I have already done here for the sake of brevity. And I save that to slot six. So as you can see, I added in the alt space, which pulls up the menu, delayed just a couple hundred milliseconds, then type the M key, then delay. Now in normal Ducky script, you can use the repeat. So what that would do is repeat the previous command in number of times. So I could do down arrow, then repeat a hundred times. However, that's not currently supported by the OMG cable. So I just went through and copied and pasted the down arrow a whole bunch of times. It's not elegant, but it works. So that's the way I've done it. You might also be able to send it left off the screen. That's worked on some machines, but not necessarily gonna work on all. Then all of this is the same as before. So here we have our beautiful finished payload. And again, you just wanna save that to one of your slots. I've chosen slot six here. And then we also are gonna go ahead and save it to boot and then make sure that this is toggled. And what that'll do is now it's saved to the boot of the cable. So the second it's plugged into a machine, it's going to run our payload and we can see what that looks like now. Okay, now that we've run our payload, we're ready to get the passwords. So all we need to do is go over to the webhook you set up. So in our case, webhook.site, and we should see a request like this that has popped up. If you don't, maybe refresh the page. Now, you'll be able to see some of this over here. A lot of this is gonna be blurred for privacy reasons, um, but it is a little confusing to sort through. It's a little easier down here but uh, what I like to do is just copy that and go over to a blank document or something and paste it in. And then you'll be able to sort it out into something that looks a little more like this. You'll see key material in either side. And this will be the password for any given Wi-Fi network. And as you can see, that's a lot easier to do than trying to hash a handshake that you've grabbed. Now all you need to do is put in the network name and the password and you've got access. 
remember, use this only ethically. Make sure you have permission to connect to the network that you're attempting to use this on and permission to use the OMG cable on the target device. Now, as you all can see, this is a pretty simple attack to perform and it's pretty scary when you think about it. Now, there are some ways you can protect yourself against this. As far as I know, it's not possible to disable that Windows feature. However, if you do know of a way, be sure to share it in the comments below. Mostly, you wanna make sure that you don't leave a Windows machine unattended, uh, logged in, and you want to be careful of any cables you plug in. There are devices you can put in the middle to make sure that it's not injecting any sort of keystrokes. It's only providing power, say, instead of data. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next episode of HackBite. Thanks for supporting Hack5. Find all our shows, community, and Pentest products at hack5.org.